The rules and regulations now for ALB uh, are four and a half rolls of air bandage. Now the four and a half rolls would represent five centimeters in width, okay, by ten meters long. So the total length of bandage you're allowed to use for a pair of hands are 45 meters. So the gauze itself is like so, okay, not elasticated. So that's the bandage. The tape is 2.5 centimeter by 10 meter. There are many different types, so uh, again, we as able will make recommendations as to the best type of tape that you can buy. But basically, that's it. Then. Now, between the fingers, it's essential that we have uh, some type of zinc oxide tape between the fingers. Again, the same rule will apply. However, there has been an exception made to the rule where we can use 1.2. 5 centimeter. Also with shears, the scissors. Okay, so these are really, really important. It's not a sharp pointed scissors, as you can see, there's a blunt end on it. Shorter top, longer bottom. They're called shears, scissors. Okay, they're used obviously in medical nurses' scissors, sometimes they're called. But basically, remember, if you're traveling through airports from the actual axis, which means this part, to the point, it cannot be longer than 3 centimeters or 20 millimeters. So remember that. So a smaller version of this, and you get that through the airport if you carry the kit with you. No problem. Okay. Lastly, commissioning wraps. It's so, so important to have yourself a marker. It doesn't really matter what type. Uh, you're marking off the bandage, commissioning the bandage. If you are on the WSB, sometimes it's required. The opposite team may be asked to uh, sign off. Their opponents uh, hand wraps so it's important that you have a marker so for commissioning purposes okay to contain all of that it's a good idea to have some sort of system so that you don't have it in a loose plastic bag or it's disorganized so when you go to apply the wrap basically it's important to have a system okay and if you have something like this a compartmental uh, bag you can store everything you need in it from, for the outside of the gloves, 5 centimeter red zinc oxide tape and blue for a closing corner and all your bits and pieces from bandage tape, etc. Obviously, your scissors here, etc. Now, I don't even have to look into that bag to know where the equipment is. I know exactly in each compartment where I hold each item. So, very important for containing. So, have a system always. Yeah. When you're hand wrapping on a chair like so, a plastic chair or a wooden chair, it's so important to pad out this area for the wrist uh, because of the carpal tunnel. You may irritate this area, which could cause pain or numbness or various other, um, promote poor circulation in the hand. So it's so important to pad out the uh, corners with a piece of towel. So if I can have your hand now. So the foot is totally comfortable. He's not reaching and there's no pressure down on the wrist or hand. So. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is ask the fighter from this position to spread our hands, the finger. And what we're going to start with is the force roll of bandage. So from here, pin it with your thumb. We take it round, okay, like so. Okay, make sure there's a good bit of stress in it. Now it's not going to move. I'm going to travel up the hand by one piece only. twice and three times. Now remember it's so important to be symmetrical otherwise it looks like a mess. But now I walk my way back down to this part of the wrist one two and three. Now what I'll do is I'll walk my way around the thumb. Now again the roll is on top the bandage is on bottom. Right? I let the bandage do the work I just let it roll around. I just support it with my thumb and forefinger against symmetrical <laughs> The whole way around two and then on three. From that position I now work across the hand and up around the knuckles on one. Stop. Okay. From this position I can ask the fighter to pinch and hold the roll of tape for me or bandage for me. And then with a pre-made wrap that I've already made, we can place this across the knuckles and start to pad out. 
right across and on top of the knuckles. Now you're wondering how big this is or how much of a roll. This is a full roll of bandage. Okay, a full roll of bandage. Now, depending on the fighter, you have to ask the fighter what they want. Depending on the fighter, they may want only half that amount. Okay, they may not like a padded, uh, the knuckles padded so much. So remember, it's always about them rather than you. But a good rule of thumb, if you're actually using a gauze like so, uh, a pro wrap gauze, um, this would be a full roll, so 10 meters in that. Now remember, he's smaller hands. With bigger uh, heavyweights, you may ne need to use, um, uh, you know, be cautious about the amount of bandage that you use because you're only allowed to use 45 meters for both hands, which is ample. That's a lot of bandage, so I can wrap like so. And again, just make sure it's symmetrical. Well, from that position, okay? And now work just across there. But what I never do, if I turn over, just for a second, is I do not wrap across the palm of the hand. So, so keep your fingers spread. So, you do again, just go there. And then I'm gonna walk around the tongue. And I walk up. And a figure of eight now. From that position, figure of eight, across once. And then across down, and a figure of eight. Across the tongue, I come up, I go around, figure of eight, like so. Come across the tongue, I travel up, across the knuckles, and again, figure of eight. And I continue this process, okay? Now you don't have to use all of the bandage. Remember, this is a 10 meter roll. Okay, but the key parts to wrap on a hand are the wrist, the thumb, and the knuckles. Okay, so again, just down again. One, again walking in the same symmetrical system of figures of eight, right here, across the palm. And now I start walking down and around into the hand. Like so. And if someone can hold that there for me. Now we're going to apply zinc, the zinc oxide tape. 2.5 centimeter by 10 meters in length. I'm going to start in this position. Now, you need to completely wrap the bandage. Okay, some fighters don't like the feel of tape on the hair on the hand, so be sensitive to that. I know they're tough guys, but still be sensitive to that. Wrap in one ring circles and the reason you do that only place one if I consistently wrap the whole way up and I make a mistake here if it's too tight I have to take it all back off again so just one complete circle so I overlap the last one by half like so and I finish in exactly the same place every time Please. Okay, good. So, if we turn the hand now sideways, now if you have air bubbles as such, so you can just use this. Take the air bubbles out, separate. I'm going to get someone to hold his wrist and hand like so. I'm going to work in a C shape supporting this here. Okay, just around this position. So I start there, sit there, sit there. Okay, just a C shape. Then from that position, a figure of six. So I'm going to start here. Okay, walk my way around, back, like so. And symmetrically, just like the rest, finish on the other side of the hand. Now, I'm going to repeat that process in the opposite direction. From there, around this side. Okay. 
And if you want zinc oxide to turn a corner, you hold it like so and pull. Okay. So we're going to repeat the process again. From there. Remember the tongue needs a ton of support. Okay. Bring it across. Slightly higher than last time. Okay, to there. Okay, like so. And I'll finish across. Now, I'm going to turn the hand over. From that position, I'm going to continue following the line up. Okay, in through the tongue. Just there. And as far as there. Now I stop. I'll turn the palm over. Okay, and as you can see, there's a gap there, healthy gap, all the way around. Okay, and I need to walk in between the fingers. So I'm going to use this guy. 1.25. I'm going to place it there, like so. I'm going to pinch, and then I'm going to pull and connect it on the other side. As I come through the fingers here, turn around, make a fist on the place. So from there, I take it like so. And I roll it just there. Okay. Same again. True, hold it, turn it over, make a fist, stir up it under, like so, and to that. Now, once I've got this on, okay, as you can see, there's now a bar being created just there. Palm is good. Now, what I need to do is finish off the wrap. So I go back to here. I need to anchor that off. Okay, like so. Okay. I walk in continuous lines. Up, symmetrically finishing in the same place every time. Turn it there. Now what I do is I walk from here, just for a sec, the outside of this bone, just down here, to the inside of this knuckle, so diagonally. Okay, so keep the fist. And then equally from the inside, just here, to the outside, just there. And what that does is it stabilizes or inhibits the hand from moving like so. So that's called ulnar deviation, radial deviation. So it holds it nice and straight. Okay, take that one off. So, two, three times, more than enough. Okay, like so. And then I finish off the wrap from the bottom, possibly in full or half strips. So one. Remember, you can use the whole 10 meter roll. Not necessary, but you can. Two. Three. Symmetrically finishing in sand line. Four. Again, supporting the wrist. Make sure this area here where those two lines are are supported. Four sets of bones here, four sets of bones there in total. Eight in the wrist. So it's so important that you just turn that over there. Thank you. 
support those guys, bring it back over, stop there, and then in half circles, go over the hand from that position. So, kind of finish there, kind of finish there, finish there. Turn the hand over, and I'm going to put one line across the bar. Now, get them to spread their hand as wide as possible. Okay. If you need to assist with that, place your fingers in like so. Okay. Place your hands. Just get it in on the bar. Okay. Turn your hand over. Make your fist strong. And the reason we do that is to make sure that we don't cut the circulation in the hand circulation off in the hand. So, before we cut, we just smooth it all out. Okay, so you can clearly see. Like so. so, I'm going to turn this open and I'm going to cut away the waste. Okay, you see this. So, you're going to Keep the pan nice and open. Now, from that position, okay, roll back this, make a fist. You can clearly see, like so, and then just pat it out. Now, obviously, if there's a bruise on the knuckle, okay, or the thumb is sprained or the wrist is sprained, the last thing I'd be doing if there's a bruise on the knuckle is slapping the hand. Okay, so you have to be nice to the foot. So we commission. Okay, and then the second thing is to mark all areas of the wrap, like so. Cross the knuckles. Okay, turn it over. Across here. Okay. And then across the bar. And that's a commissioned hand wrap. So this is specifically if asked to commission, if you're in the WSB and you're asked to commission the opposing team's wraps, that's one of the best ways to do it. Again, when commissioning, remember that if this wrap returns to you and any of those lines have been broken, this tape over these areas, that means they have been altered or tampered with. Okay, and that's a hand wrap.